Hello, I'm Kath Armstrong, creator of the Cheapskates Club, where our goal is to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing. Is it wrong for a Christian to stockpile? Now, I've jumped right in with this and gone to a topic that we as Christians, as homemakers, as Proverbs 31 women and as cheapskates all struggle with in one way or another, stockpiling hoarding, stocking up, whatever you want to call it. Is it wrong for a Christian to stockpile? Shouldn't we trust that God will supply our needs? After all, that is his promise, isn't it? These are questions that I am asked so often. Now, I'm not quiet about my faith and I'm not quiet about our pantry. I talk about both all the time and I talk about how the pantry has been built what we have in it how long we've planned for it to sustain us in a crisis I do not ever show photos of it or give exact quantities it is our pantry and it is private it is built to suit our needs and We have had so many times in our married life when we've had to rely on the pantry to keep us fed, to keep us clean, to keep the house clean, that I will never not have a stocked pantry. But is it wrong for a Christian to have a stockpile of food and other Um, necessities well it really depends on why they have that stockpile if they um, if they're stockpiling specifically for the last days the time of trouble so that they'll be prepared and able to hide from trouble to stay where they are instead of leaving as we're told to do then perhaps that's the wrong type of stockpile. Now, bear with me here. If you stockpile and build your pantries to sustain your family through hard times, natural disasters, unemployment, and boy, do I have first-hand experience of that one, illness, I have first-hand experience of that too, war, and I pray none of us have to ever experience the horrors of war, but I know that we will, and... So in my prayers also I ask for strength and wisdom to survive that if it comes to us. Well, then that is what we as Christians and Proverbs 31 wives and mothers are meant to do. That's just plain good stewardship, common sense. But if we're building our pantries to try and avoid the hard times that we know are coming um, just before Jesus comes, that's not the only time of stockpile we need and it's probably not a good reason for stockpiling. For those times, we need to build a stockpile of faith. We need to build a stockpile of trust that God will provide our needs, physical and spiritual Proverbs 31.14 says she is like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar. So we're to bring our food and their other needs from far and wide and build up our pantries so that we can feed our families and keep them and our homes clean, um, keep us clothed, keep us healthy. We are to build our pantries with what we need to look after our families in times of crisis, in times of hardship, such as a pandemic or unemployment or a snowstorm, for example. And that means we need to think outside the 2021 square. Um... How would we cook without gas or electricity? Um, Do you know um, how to cook over a fire? 
Do you have alternate sources for cooking? A camp oven, a sun oven, um, a barbecue, for example. Um, do you have manual tools? Because no power means no food processor or no Nutribullet or microwave oven. So do you have kitchen tools that will um, do those jobs? Now I have my mother's old egg beater. It's older than me, but it still works just fine. I have a mandolin that takes the place of the food processor, wooden spoons, whisks. I have fireproof um, casserole dishes and baking dishes. I have cast iron and spun steel pots and pans that can go into a fire, over a fire. They can be used on the cooktop in the house, in the oven. They're versatile. Do you have most of your pantry in your freezer? What will you do if the power is out for any length of time? Do you have a generator and the fuel to run it to keep the freezer going? Or is most of your pantry comprised of shelf-stable foods, either dehydrated or bottled or canned, pickled? They're all shelf-stable methods of preservation methods of preservation so as homemakers and not just christian homemakers but all homemakers we need to think of these things and plan and prepare for them it's um you know it's not rocket science now building a pantry takes time Unless, of course, you are you know, extremely wealthy and can afford to go out and buy every single thing you need in the quantities that you need all at once. Well, we're just not that rich. <laughs> we don't have the money to do that. And I'm pretty sure most of us don't. We're not that wealthy. So instead, every day, every week, every month, Little by little, add to your pantry. You know, this week I added more tea bags and I added um, more seeds and a packet of sugar and, dare I say, it, a can of hairspray to our pantry. Guys, what can I say? I, I want to be a you know Christian with neat and tidy hair. So when I say, you know, pantry, I don't just mean the cupboard or the shelves or the shed where you keep your food because we have lots of different types of pantries, don't we? We have um, our food pantry, but we have cleaning supplies. We have medical and first aid supplies. We have garden supplies. Yes, you can have a seed pantry. We have clothing, especially if we have children. We have clothing. We have linen in Manchester. We have tools, fabric and yarn, craft supplies, gifts, fuel. Everything we need and use belongs in a pantry of some sort. So for the purpose of these videos, because I plan this to be a series, pantry is going to be all-encompassing. Over the course of the videos, we'll be looking at how we can build our pantries on a budget so that they have the things that we need, that we like, that we want, that we use. This is the physical part of being a Christian, uh, Proverbs 20, uh, 31 woman in 2021. Then there's the spiritual part. Now, more than ever before, it is vital that we keep our eyes and our faith firmly on God and on his holy word. We, we need to study the word. We need to pray um, without ceasing for understanding. You know, it, it's all well and good to read, but if we read without understanding, it's not going to help us. We all need that understanding so many of the things that are happening in our world right now are confusing. And they are happening fast. 
just as the Bible predicted they would. The prophet Hosea said, my people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. So we need to study, we need to learn, we need to gain that knowledge, the knowledge that we need to survive the end times and to be ready for when Jesus comes. But I've digressed. I haven't actually answered the question, is it wrong for a Christian to stockpile? Short answer, no. If you're stockpiling, not hoarding, stockpiling to keep your family healthy and happy and doing it according to the Bible, it's not wrong. It's not wrong to look ahead to what your family could or would need in the future and make sure you have those needs at hand. That's good stewardship. And we'll just plain common sense. But Jesus was absolutely clear about what is coming and what he expects us as believers to do. Now, Matthew 24, um, verses 16 through 18 says, Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let no one on the housetop go down to take anything out of the house. Let no one in the field go back to get their cloak. Mark 13, 14 through 16 reads, When you see the abomination that causes desolation standing where it does not belong, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let no one on the housetop go down or enter the house to take anything out. Let no one in the field go back to get their cloak. And Luke 21, 21 says, Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let those in the city, excuse me, let those in the city get out and let those in the country not enter the city. Three different books in the Bible all saying the same thing, words from Jesus. So the Bible is very clear on this. Jesus was very clear on this. We will need to leave everything behind and trust in God to supply our needs. So that means we can't take our regular stockpile with us amongst our other earthly things. So what will we do? How will we prepare to care for our family when we leave our homes as directed? Do you remember when the Israelites were fleeing Egypt and they were hungry and they were they're desperate for food and God sent them the manna? Do you remember that? He told them to get it every day except the Sabbath day. So they were to gather what they needed just for the day except on the sixth day they get a double lot. It was a test. Did they trust him? No, they didn't. They were scared, I suppose. And so the first morning, some gathered more than they needed to hoard. They didn't trust the Lord to send more the next morning. They didn't trust his promise. They didn't trust his word. And we know what happened. They woke up the next morning and that manna was off. It was rotten. He was full of maggots. Now we're told that in um, Exodus. It says, however, some of some of however, some of them paid no attention to Moses. They kept part of it until morning, but it was full of maggots and began to spell. Yuck. because they didn't trust. They had no faith. But the Lord had sent them fresh manna. He was there for them. He kept his word. And come the sixth day, they gathered enough for two days. He sent a double portion. They gathered enough for the two days. And when they woke up on the Sabbath, the manna was as good as if it had just been done, just come down from heaven. 
just been freshly gathered. God kept his promise to take care of them. And he will care for us too. So we as Christians living in 2021, we need to be able to distinguish between, between our responsibility to care for our family and our household and build our pantries and trust that God will supply our needs during the time of trouble. Now that doesn't mean we can sit back and do nothing. We still need to live in this world, even if we're not a part of it. So we need to look at what is available to fill our pantries and we need to look at what is available so that when the time comes, we will be ready and able to leave our homes and our possessions behind if we have the opportunity to flee. We need to take the opportunities God sends us to stock up on bargains, to listen to his voice when he tells us to ask that neighbour if we can pick the fruit off his trees because it's just dropping on the ground and rotting. We need to fill our earthly pantries to the best of our ability to sustain us while we're here. But our wealth, our wealth must be in our faith, not our homes or our clothes or our cars or our jewellery or any other earthly possession. Now, this doesn't mean we can't have nice homes or clothes. It doesn't mean we can't have a comfortable couch to sit on, a cosy bed to sleep in. It just means we need to remember these are just things. And if we get too attached to them, we might not be able to leave them when the time comes. I don't want to be so attached to things that I turn away from God. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you, where I go, you know, and the way you know. That's John 14. Now, is it wrong of me to be excited about the thought of having a, a heavenly mansion? Look, we have a nice home here on this earth. Well, we think it's quite nice, but it's not a mansion. It's not a mansion by any means. And it's really humbling to think that that God believes me worthy of a heavenly mansion. But that also doesn't mean that when the time comes, we shouldn't be as prepared as we can be. We think nothing of having a stockpile ready in case of a natural disaster or illness, unemployment. We've talked about this a bit. And that stockpile should have exactly what we will need when the time comes to leave our homes. We need to think ahead. And yes, I believe that time will come. I believe it will come quickly. It will come so fast. In the blink of an eye, we will be stunned at the speed. The events of the last 20 months, even over the last month, make me believe that sooner rather than later, we will see Jesus and coming in the sky. And what a sight that will be. So think about what you would be able to carry if you had to flee. Now, it wouldn't be much. So if you're doing a bug out bag, keep it light, keep it practical. There's a part of me that wants to be here for the time of trouble because I know that Jesus is on his way. He's coming soon. And then there's the part of me, the, the human part, the sinner part of me, that's a little worried that, you know, if I'm here, I won't be strong enough to recognise the signs. I won't be learned enough to recognise the signs. I'll be deceived by the false prophets and the false gods. The fake miracles will blind me to the truth. God's word is above all those things, even the things people believe to be the most valuable. His word is so valuable that there are those who will try to take it from us. 
you know, there are parts of the world where Bibles are illegal. I believe that will happen here soon too. Learning God's word means that even when my hard copy Bible isn't with me, isn't available, his word is with me and I can recall it when I need to. I've learned it. It's with me. And this is my spiritual stockpile. The words of God and his prophets that I've committed to my memory. It's another, another pantry. So as you work on filling your physical pantry, work on filling your spiritual pantry too. A little every day. It's never going to be over full or too heavy to carry. Fill your mind with the word of God. Commit it to memory. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto, unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And that's in Romans 1.16. Don't be ashamed. Build your spiritual pantry. Fill it. Fill it to overflowing so that you can't ever. That's one thing that will never be able to be taken off you. Before I go, if you like our channel, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe and leave a comment. I do read all the comments and I try to answer them all too, if I can. Um, so I'd love to hear from you. And if you know someone who might like our channel or who might benefit from knowing about the Cheapskates Club, Cheapskates Club, please use the share button underneath me here to share this video with them. Thank you for watching. God bless and I'll see you in the next video.